Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. I am Francesca Zotta, president of UGEN. Uh, UGEN European Generation is the association that leads the EU for EU program since uh, 2015. So um, I think uh, most of you already know the program and uh, uh, have been participating for several years. There are some, uh, I think there are some, someone new. Can you um, raise your hand, those of you who are new, or if there is any new who has not registered yet in the, in the portal? We have two new. Okay, great. So it's a, uh, it's uh, for both groups uh, of uh, people, uh, this meeting. So don't worry, we will talk about uh, everything, uh, registrations and uh, procedures and tips for um, engaging with the students. Um, so yeah, um, yes, today is dedicated to you, to host organizations. We, actually we use a lot of our time to communicate with students and sometimes uh, uh, we don't communicate to companies enough so i'm happy to start with these uh, uh, info days dedicated to companies um, connected here are uh, also two colleagues that you might uh, have already um, spoken to uh, tonia urbano she um, she also works in the management of the activities of the um, eu for you program with me and sara well i don't see her now but she will uh, arrive soon and she is uh, uh, the communication officer of uh, the program you for you so basically um, with this program we organize the trainship of students um, in europe so students come from 45 universities in europe uh, in particular from four countries italy france spain and portugal uh, so they uh, can do the, they they must do their internship abroad so in another country different from the one where they are enrolled at the university throughout europe um, I would uh, uh, start with the sh uh, sharing with you my um, my screen uh, because I want to show you uh, the website of the EU for You program and I want to follow uh, some key points uh, to give you the main information about the program and then uh, I also want to uh, show you my um, my screen when so that you can see the account of the host organization and then. I will uh, leave you the floor for any uh, questions regarding all these things. And uh, also, um, I invite you to write your questions here in the chat so that then I can uh, read all the questions uh, one by one and uh, answer uh, to your doubts. So first of all, let me share my screen. Okay, so here is my screen. Then here we start. So if you just Google eu4eu.org, you will get to this page. This is the website of the eu for You program. Here in about eu for You, you have just a general uh, presentation of the program. So the program ran, ran since uh, 
2015 and then uh, at the beginning it uh, it was just for students from the Italian universities then since it worked well we decided to um, to do other projects in other countries so now we have uh, these projects with all together are part of a program you for you in uh, in these four countries that I mentioned you before Italy France Spain and Portugal uh, so yeah here you can see a description of the of the program I will not go through it because I want to give you really practical information now here we you will find information regarding us Eugen, regarding all the national the four coordinators of every country the partner universities for instance i will quickly show you these partner universities so the 45 universities that participate uh, that i told you before the Italians, France, Spain, Spanish and Portuguese universities. Here you have a map with the, the universities where the students come from. Uh, here, host organizations and students, uh, you will have some information regarding uh, um you know statistics regarding the profiles of companies that and students that participate you you can take your time and go through it and uh, satisfy your curiosity uh, here in info there is a very important uh, page that i will open in a minute just i want to tell you that uh, in outcomes and evaluation you will find the report with a lot of statistics regarding our participants uh, this uh, is updated to 2020 i think and we will publish a new one by the end of this year but uh, it yeah it, it, it can give you a really interesting uh, picture overview of uh, our participants then you have testimonials uh, from uh, both students and uh, host organizations and news uh, the, these are very interesting pages i suggest you to take a little bit of time and have a look but now we go to documents and rules uh, because this page is very interesting for you um here information for host organizations here you find the call for host organizations so the updated call for you to participate here you have key info for host organization here is a link to the portal guidelines to the use of the portal because you have to register to this portal that you can also access from here you for you portal uh you have to register on that portal and here you have guidelines uh, to um, understand how to do that and you have material project summary a brochure terms and conditions uh, and this is a template of letter of availability uh, which is something i will tell you later uh, about uh, these two mm, they are not interesting for you because they are related to uh, past uh, mm, call so i want to read quickly with you this document key info for us organization to give you an, an overview of the rules so the duration of the internship can be from two to six months for this time uh, the period of the trainship is between the 2 january 2023 and the 31st may 2024 there's there is a preferred focus on eu projects focus of uh, the trainship of the tasks uh, of the students uh, but it's not mandatory uh, task and dates are agreed by you together with the trainees you will agree on tasks and dates uh obviously the internship must be um done in a different country from where the students is um, registered 
there are no costs for host organizations. Uh, you will participate free of charge. Uh, students uh, receive a scholarship with uh, our program, an Erasmus Plus scholarship for trainship, and they also will have an insurance. So what you have to do is to um, let's uh, where where are the must pro you must provide the workstation desk internet connection you must provide the tutor which is present at least three times per week uh, you must fill in our surveys. Um, any organization can participate. The only organizations banned are bodies of the EU institutions. Core business must be coherent with EU values. Uh, so regarding the registration and matching phase, the matching phase this time, registration must be done on the eu for you portal. I think here there is a mistake in this link. The link is eu4eu.org, as I showed you before. Um, registration for host organizations are open throughout the year, but only uh, from the 3rd November, so uh, this time for for new internship, host organization could register starting from the 3rd November. Uh, from yesterday until the 28th November 2022. So during this month, basically, you will have the time to um, uh, look for trainship profiles in our portal and uh, uh, write an email or um, also maybe you can uh, have a call, a telephone to the uh, student in order to invite them to have an interview and if you like the candidate then you will uh, create a letter of availability uh, for them on the portal i will show you that later um, uh, but also you might receive some email from students that uh, see your profile on the portal and so they in this case they will invite you to organize an interview they will uh, propose their application for you. Um, obviously, you can do this if your profile is approved. Uh, once your registration is approved, you will be able to see the student's profile. This will happen straight away now because the, the, the matching phase is open. Um, I already told you about this. Uh, if the interview is, a, is a successful, you will create this letter of av availability, which is a web form. You don't need a, um, a Word file or something like that. Uh, if uh, the candidate that you choose uh, gets the scholarship, then you will receive a notification by the system automatically. How many, host, uh, how many trainees per host organization can you host? Maximum of 15 per year. Um, there is a ratio of three staff for maximum one trainee. So if you in your team you are, <clears throat> uh, you must be minimum three people. If you are three, you can host one trainee. Uh, if you are six, you can host uh, two trainees and so on. So uh, before, let me let me check if there are um, if there are questions. Uh, I I don't think so. Uh, yes, I would have a yeah. question. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yes, I would like to ask regarding the number of staff versus uh, number of interns, um, is it related to people at the office or general in the company, in the, in the, office. In the organization? Uh, in the just office. in the office. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you very much. 
You're welcome. Uh, okay, so you can also write your uh, questions in the chat uh, if you want, but since uh, uh, we, we, it's not uh, many of us today, you can also quickly ask your question as uh, Magdana, Magdalena did, don't worry, whatever you prefer. So let's go to, uh, to the portal. Um, so let me a little bit go back here. Here, yeah, I showed you that. And then uh, this is dedicated basically to students of the Italian consortium. So there is not much left. I go to the portal. You click here and you go to the portal, which is the important um, software where here you have a quick uh, presentation and then uh, still in the Euphoria website and here you go to the portal. So if you are new, you still have to sign up, you just go here and you, um, sorry, email, password, password again. I agree to the terms of service, register, and then you receive an email, uh, you click there and then finally you can log in. So, uh, so for those who have done this, they can directly log in. If you forget your password, very easily you can uh, follow this procedure or any other technical problems, contact the help desk here. Uh, so if you log in, I will show you, I will show you what happens with my, our profile. For instance, uh, our UGen profile, you log in. So this is uh, our page with the information that we have already uh, inserted. But if you haven't uh, your profile yet, you will find this page where you will have to fill in all this information. Um, we don't have uh, many questions regarding this. It's, it's quite uh, easy. Let me see uh, here, obviously, the country where, you're, where the trainship will take place. So if the organization has several, has several branch in Europe, uh, this is not where you have to write it. Here you write where the trainship will take place. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, maybe sometimes the companies uh, um, don't do. Uh, yeah, here we uh, would like to know what kind of logistical support you provide. And uh, we don't uh, accept uh, um, now remote internship. So the internship must take place in presence. Um, so there must be an office somehow. And you have to write about it here. And uh, then here you can add one or more trainship offers. So for instance, in our case, uh, I show you, we added only one trainship offer. So we are looking for someone for our communication team. So here you have the candidate's ideal profile, daily task, and here, it's important you write the internship address, the, the, the address of the office where the internship will take place so they can uh, find the accommodation and uh, better understand where it's going to be. Then you can uh, add another internship office, uh, internship, sorry, offer. So if you, you can, uh, uh, filling these uh, four fields as many times as you want to um, add trainship offers uh, um, in a different, uh, for instance, uh, uh, office or field uh, within your organizations. 
Um, so let me go back to the previous, complete the registration. Confirm, okay. Let me go back to this. Uh, ah, some fields are not correct because uh, if you don't have an organization ID, you have to flag, he flag here. Obviously we have one, but uh, I haven't inserted it uh, now. So now complete the registration, okay. And then you will have this uh, page with, uh, you know, uh, sum up of all the information you put in your uh, account. Then uh, during the uh, matching period, so exactly this month of November until the 28th of November, you can search for trainees. So you go here, search for trainees, search trainees. Maybe it's a slow because uh, these days is really, really busy. The server is overwhelmed of uh, students uh, uh, looking for their host organizations. Okay, so filter train, you can filter trainees uh, by all these fields. The, the, so university country, period of availability, uh, this is not really interesting sign up date because anyway, well, yeah, it can be interesting if you already have done a search, then there might be some new students. So you might decide to uh, use these fields, uh, sign up date later than the day that you already done the search. But uh, usually the interesting fields uh, for filter your uh, research are this working field of interest, uh, language level, and pe period of availability. And uh, so if you don't uh, do any filter, if you don't use any filter, obviously you will find all students. So all these students from Italy, Spain, Portugal, and France are registered, approved, so you can, for instance, uh, you are looking for someone in engineering and man, uh, engineering and manufacturing. Uh, you go to his profile, you click on the surname. So, uh, you can see the, his profile from here, all the main information, and then here you can view the CV motivation letter, uh, language certificate and declaration of compliance are not particularly interesting for you. For your selection, the important things are curriculum and motivation letter. You can see here the language level. Then here in this um, uh, red box, you are informed that if you like this profile, if you are interested in the profile of this trainee, then what you don't have to directly create the letter of availability. This happens after, after that you contact the uh, trainee by email or by telephone, and you uh, maybe organize um, an interview um, with uh, Zoom, uh, Skype uh, or telephone, whatever you want. And then once you decide that you want to uh, accept this uh, trainee and uh, you have a verbal agreement with the trainee so that this uh, uh, student also uh, declares that wants to do the internship with you and you uh, talk about tasks and uh, dates so you agree on these two things then you create the letter of availability 
So here you write what you agreed with the, with the students. The working language will be the focus is Euro planning and management, yes or no, you know, this is not mandatory. There is a focus on trainship, yes or no. Uh, sorry, on digital skills, uh, yes or no, uh, not mandatory. Um, here you describe the main tasks of the trainship. Here you write uh, about, uh, you confirm again where is going to take place the internship. Yeah, remotely uh, is not possible for the, you, you might add a, a remote period after the minimum two months in present. So that's why remotely is here, but uh, you cannot organize the old trainship remotely. And then here you, you will write the dates of the trainship. Obviously, this can change because you might uh, uh, create this letter for, I don't know, six months later. So it can change because of uh, your needs or the students' needs. Uh, there might be some days or weeks uh, delay. Uh, and uh, so don't worry, you will communicate that uh, through email. You don't have to create a new uh, letter of availability. Uh, here, your contact and telephone number, and then you click on create letter. I won't do that now, but this is how it works. Okay, so it seems to me that uh, I told you all the main things I wanted to, to say. So now I interrupt, interrupt the sharing um go back to our meeting and uh so now please uh um uh, it's uh, your time for any questions any doubts regarding the website the portal tips uh, or what happened to you in the past and you want to understand how to uh, better manage some situation you've had. Any questions? Yes, we have maybe one question. Yagmur. Hello. First of all, thank you for the information. Thanks to you. And it's our first time. Yeah, uh, for this platform. So I'm wondering, I just want to make sure uh, we contact with candidates and if they will receive uh, any grant, we will be notified. So sorry, if, sorry, can you can you say it again? I didn't understand. So uh, we will contact with candidates. Yes. And if they will receive any grants, we will be notified, correct? Yes, I mean, if you um, create the letter of availability, then this letter you send it to the student. The student will have to sign it and upload it on the portal on his or her account. Uh, then um, sometimes uh, uh, there, there are uh, too many students for the number of scholarships. So it's not for 100% for sure that the student will get the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, yes. Uh, but, uh, and then in that case, you will be notified by the system that the student that um, you matched with received the scholarship. So you, you will be notified and then you will start uh, um, communicating with the student because uh, he will have to write a uh, um, learning agreement that you also mm -hmm. will have to sign. Um, but yes, you will be notified. Okay, great. So what if in case they cannot get a scholarship, so then we won't be able to collaborate? 
in terms of well this? it depends so we uh from this year we try to uh use uh, grants from uh, uh the um, following call in mm -hmm. order to finance the matching already done so for instance last year in Italy, we only had this situation in Italy because we had a lot of uh, students uh, registered, uh, but the number of scholarships was lower. So with the new uh, project of the new year, we could also finance the matching of the previous year. So it depends if you accept uh, maybe to postpone a little bit the trainship Mm -hmm. you can still finance it if you have uh, the if your dates are uh, strict and um, then maybe it's not possible okay mm -hmm. i see great thank you for your answer you're welcome sabina yes, yes um it's um more a question more for a technical part of the platform so yes. from my experience of hosting uh, students and all of this preparation and matching process, yes. um, sometimes there are some a little small technical situations on the platform that I'm not sure if you have fixed them, we will see this year. So one year we had a situation where we couldn't choose Croatia as the country, and then we we of course send the feedback to your support team but it just takes maybe a bit long for them to give us feedback or to fix the problems and also one thing that i think it's very important and would make our work easier yeah. we had a situation where we sent the availability letter and then the student got back to us we had to change the dates and then we can't generate another availability yeah. letter so again we have to send the mail to the yeah the support team so i don't know if there is any way for you to make these technical things a bit yeah, easier I told for you, the... if if it's uh, only a few days uh does uh, you don't need to change the letter of availability uh we know that uh, uh it it can happen that the dates uh, must be changed so you just you can just write us an email and then so we are aware of that Okay, just uh, notify you. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. the universities that um, students are coming from are also, uh, they want the correct dates, if you know what I mean. So they're in existing. The, in the letter of availability. Yes. So the letter of availability, you, uh, if you want to change it, yes, you have to contact us to do that. Because, you know, we cannot allow um, students or companies change uh, because the moment uh, the student upload the, the letter of availability is the uh, final, the conclusion of their official application. So that's uh, the end of all the procedure. So we cannot uh, allow Mm, randomly to change uh, this document but if you need to you write to us and uh, we will do that from the office okay i understand thank you i just wanted to check yeah sorry uh regarding your first question yeah it was more of a comment than a question so um i don't know sometimes the technical details of the platform um get messed up uh, i think previous year i had a problem where i couldn't um pick croatia as the country where um where the internship will take place mm. but then i contacted I your support know. team and then yeah. they changed it but the year before that it was working fine so i don't know maybe you know yeah uh, we technology <laughs> hundreds of train ships every year yeah and uh, basically it works very well this software so obviously sometimes that might be some bugs and uh, little things like this uh, but uh, uh yeah we fix it uh quickly i don't remember this kind of uh uh issue that you're talking about but it could happen i mean I'm not surprised it can happen. 
Yeah, it wasn't very a big problem. It's just uh, mm-hmm. for us, we were waiting yeah. for, for the response. But uh, since students were already applying for the internship yeah. and they yeah. well, I, if I you think have Slovenia technical, because... technical problems so usually the help desk it's quick but uh, because it's not us the IT mm-hmm. team but if you see that they are not answering obviously you can uh, tell us so that we are also aware because uh, we don't know uh, if you write directly to the IT help desk we don't know so you can also oh, write I understand us. yeah okay okay thank you you're welcome any other questions um especially i'm curious from those who already knows the program so what uh, would you like to know more what did you expect from this uh, meeting which information are you still looking for you okay so if you don't have any other questions um i'm happy because i think it's quite clear our communication and um, so just uh, remember to write us for anything we are very quick Uh, tonya uh she she is very very quick in answering uh, all uh, emails ah oh, there is another question from sabina sabina go ahead no i just wanted to quickly share um, my experience because i'm aware yeah. that there are some new people here we yeah. have very very good experiences basically with the program and we had uh, quality candidates and and uh, they really achieved a lot in our organization and they bring a lot of value to the organization so i would definitely recommend for organizations to get included and uh, we had actually several students that we were also uh, thinking of um, hiring in our companies so um, very very good program and um, a lot of people that would like to come back but they had to maybe go finish their their studies so they went back to their countries Thank you very much, Sabina. I really, I really appreciate your uh, testimonials. And uh, honestly, um, I'm, I'm, I feel very relaxed about all this because uh, we have a really very, very good feedback from uh, both uh, students and host organization like yours. Um, so I'm always happy to to receive this kind of comments. Um, I remind you that uh, at the end of the trainship, uh, all host organizations have to fill in a survey where actually we ask about this, uh, about the experience, about the, um, the the software, about the trainees. So we need your comments to improve every time uh, and also to find uh, you know the energy <laughs> to go on and uh, um, and do as much as we can okay thank you Mafalda she's writing us uh, so you just wanted to understand how t- it works uh, I hope you had the clear overview today and um, so Write us for anything, and we, we are here to support you. And uh, good luck uh, with your uh, matching face. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.